Well, I was born into a veterinary family. Uh, my great-grandfather, grandfather and father were all vets. And when I was about, well, ever since I can remember, five or six or whenever it was, I was going to be a vet. The veterinary practice is called Head and Head. It was originally Hoadley. There was Hoadley and Fraser. Mr. Fraser, in 1907, I think it was, was kicked by a horse. It ruptured his uh, spleen and uh, he bled to death. In the meantime, my grandfather came back and married Mr. Hoadley's daughter. And then my grandfather, Alfred Head's brother, joined him, uh, Stanley Head, and uh, that became Head and Head. And then Stanley moved away and eventually my father came back and joined my grandfather and so it was head and head then and then my, my father and I were head and head. As a kid I used to go around with my dad and uh, step the, there was a, a seat, um, was a continuous front seat that wasn't you know like they are bucket seats now and I used to stand on the seat with my hand through a, a, his, on his shoulder. My father was very good to me and I mean for example when I was a teenager we'd go out to deliver a calf and he'd say, no, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because you put the ropes on in the side, you see, you put a rope on, the head is in, so you want to pull the head up, you put the rope around the back of the head to, to pull the head up. You do that blind, you can't see what you're doing, you do it with your hand. And he said, I'll put the rope on, he said, and then I'll say that I can't quite reach, I've got a bit of a gammy hand, he said, and I wonder if you could do the job. And then so you go in and have a feel around to see what I've done to get the experience, and the farmer will think you've done it. <laughs> he was quite happy like that, you see. And I would do the farm, so that's very good. But And he did that because his father was the opposite. You know, don't forget, my grandfather was, grew up in a sort of Victorian age and an Edwardian age, and he'd fought in the Boer War and the First World War, and he was quite a serious man. My father was a, a completely different character in many ways. I qualified in, what, 1972, and originally... 90% of my time was on the farms. As the uh, pet side became bigger and the farms became less, a lot of farmers were selling out and dairy farms especially, then it ended up about, I would suppose, 70% doing farm work and 30% doing the pet work. When we started in 72, there were so many farms, we made it a rule to go in about a 10 mile radius so the whole of the Lizard Peninsula, and then up towards Red Roof, down towards Penzance, down towards Falmouth, and up to Stithians, and, uh, and that sort of area. So about a 10 mile radius. Towards the end, as the farms got less, some of the farms we were going 30 and 40 miles. So things changed, as they always do. Some farms I've known four generations, and there's a wedding coming off soon, and as soon as they, well, when that the baby arrives from that, uh, family, that'll be the fifth generation of that family that I will have known, uh, which is pretty good. A lot of them fourth generation. When I first started there were quite a few that remembered my grandfather and one person, one farmer remembered my great-grandfather and when I asked him what he remembered he said, oh well, he wore dark glasses and always had a dew drop on the end of his nose. <laughs> so that wasn't very helpful really, but that was my only memory I ever had of my great-grandfather. I started getting into photography, I think, because at school, in art classes, I was absolutely useless at art. I can't draw, I can't paint, and I wanted to find some artistic talent, if I possibly could. And I, f I took a few pictures of, uh, with an old Zenith, Russian Zenith camera, uh, and quite enjoyed it. And I, so I went to evening class uh, in Helston, and, um, and really enjoyed that and, and started to print, develop and print my own photographs. And then I took some photographs of farmers uh, and I thought this actually would be a good collection. Uh, and I realised I was in a, a rather privileged position to do it because uh, hopefully they kind of trusted me and they knew me. It wasn't like a stranger going on the farm. And I could show pictures of their neighbours to them. So they, oh yes, we'd love a picture like that. And so it's, it, it became a bit of A, a challenge with some of them to let me take their photograph, and B, I realised it would make quite a good collection, you know, you know and that was it.
if you look at the photographs, most of them are smiling or most of them are looking happy. I, I had that sort of relationship with most of them that I tried to get them in a happy mood and I tried to look for something interesting on the farm as the background, whatever that might be, and talk to them about it and try and relax them and take the photos as quickly as I could. It was all over very quickly because if you hung around they lost interest. The light is important. You see, I had, I've no, no qualifications in photography and I've, I very quickly learned that, especially in black and white, if you have shadows, you've absolutely had it. So you had to wait for a kind of a dull day and I didn't have, you know, reflectors to reflect the light, did nothing. I just took these pictures and hoped the light would be good. And I often took, if I saw they were wearing something that was interesting, something stripy or checked or something like that, it was far more interesting than uh, if they just had an old green boiler suit on. Uh, and so I'd look for the opportunity. I took my camera everywhere with me and I knew when I was going to be on a farm for a decent length of time that I could relax them. If you were straight in, straight out on a, a stressful call, that wasn't the time to take the photographs. But if you were there doing a job where you might be there for an hour or two and at the end that was the time to take it. I'm quite proud that I've done them. Uh, I'm, quite, I'm very pleased I've done them and it's been nice going back because I've really haven't looked to touch them for a good 10 years. You know, I had a, a phone call or a chat with one of the farmers who said we're going to have a, um, a, a farmer's uh, exhibition with them. You know, we'd love to do your photographs. What about it? And I said, well, I, I have no dark room, I have nothing. And then they put me in touch with Carver and of course that's been wonderful because it's stimulated it, the whole thing and started all over again. I would promised myself when I got old and couldn't sort of walk around anymore, do all the things I like doing outdoors, I'd do it. But I, well, I don't know, I ever would have. So this has made me do it and it's been tremendous. Yeah, I'm really pleased, really pleased. This is the Hoskin family at uh, Tregaris. Vivian and Francis Hoskin, Willie, Willie Leslie and Nancy, and Sarah. Nancy. And Lizzie yeah. must be, wasn't oh, yeah, it? Must be Lizzie, Lizzie, I guess, yeah. yeah. And the dog. <laughs> yes. The dog often features in these photographs. Uh, they, they built that ramp, didn't they, for um, Logan's dung spreader or slurry? Mm -hmm. Never yes. ever used it. No. I don't think it ever used it. It was always in the yard. You know, most immaculate slurry ramp I think anywhere. And I think it even had a, a cement um, flower or something cast in the mortar or something. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it was ever used, was it? No. You know, and never seen it dirty. No. 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 And Willie, Willie always had some peculiar hat or other on. Didn't yes. He? Uh, Two brothers. Yeah. yeah. Their first cousins and brothers and my father as well. Our great grandfather he moved up from St Burian in um, 1904, and uh, I don't know what there was ten of them, wasn't there? Yeah, ten of them, I think. And their father was was one of them, John Hoskin. And uh, most people down St Burian or down west at the time milked Guernsey cows, so we all had Guernseys when we moved up this way first, and they carried on milking Guernseys until. Well, Leslie only changed over yeah, in the last 15, 15 years, 15 I suppose. Years. Yeah, Guernsey cows all that time. Now, you've heard of the A team on television. It was the thing, well, this is the B team. Uh, we were used to, they used to help each other testing. So there's Dennis Hughes, All right. um, Alan Williams, and Leslie Tripp. And they were always known as the B team. Uh, <laughs> Leslie's got a milk and apron on. Yeah, yeah. Yes. He's got a tower on. A yeah. tower was a. a no, they had a tower. No, they had a tower. No, but a tower was a Hessian apron that the bowel makers wore for mining, wasn't they? For um, breaking up the rock, I think. But I uh, think Uncle Jeffrey and Grandpa was called a apron a tower. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, mother and you have made them. I remember yeah. we had them all right yeah. now. Wilfred Ouch, remember Wilfred? He lived well, out touch me pipes. Good. He worked for John Cole and down the north. Oh, right. Um, wet weather rather than get wet, and then you turn a sack up, put one corner up into the other. Turn putting on your head for a hat and get yourself dry as well. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember him doing that? I haven't seen him do that now. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I've had a word down at uh, Newlyn Harbour. Um, oh. There is a peace treaty here uh, on this one that they aren't expecting it to be returned. 
I would have got that when we were out in the boat in the river and I would just found it on the shore somewhere and brought that home. Oh, did you? I generally go out picking up things along the coast. Oh, right. that's, that's how you got it. There's a yeah. Newland fish box yeah. Yeah. Uh, made, into a, <laughs> no. made into a soap <laughs> box. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I made that's the go kart for them yeah. 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 before I was married down here. And, uh, so how old would David have been there? That'll give you an idea of the age. <laughs> we reckoned about three, didn't we? That was taken in 1994. Yeah, that would have been the year Francis was born. That would have been about right. That's looking up, that's where, um, at the top of your mum's. Yes, yeah. Stable there. It's just out here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's at the top just there, outside yeah. there. You know, we've we got a lovely hill here. We've got the top and see how far we can get. Yeah. <laughs> you had go-karts in your days. Yeah. I had a beauty with scooter wheels on the back, big pneumatic scooter wheels. And heavy to pull up at my front. Oh, go, go down. Go down. <laughs> The fathers all have one, and of course they made them for the children. Mm. And then if they had birthday parties, they all met up, and you all had to bring your go kart. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And they would have go kart races. Yeah, was, oh, yeah. I've got lots of really pictures of local children <laughs> in that go kart. Uh, well, this is the two Jeffs at Lanarth, uh, Jeff Tiffin and Jeff Pickering. Oh. Oh. Jeff Pickering did all the engineering side of it, too, you know, and uh, you know, if it was broken, which it frequently was, Jeff Pickering was the man who mended everything. He always liked a good joke, didn't he, Pickering, because Andrew Dunker was up there um, putting the borehole in, and I think they did something, you know, wasn't quite right, it'll do for the night, so they had a cow die, Jeff Pickering pulled his dead cow up and put it by Andrew's work. Oh. <laughs> Next day Andrew turned up and said, dead cow. Dead cow. <laughs> Just for him. Yeah, we can guess yeah. that's sort of happening. <laughs> Is that dead? That's down the north? That's in the north. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. gone. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's, that's gone. Oh, yeah. That's in the main yard where they used to have the puppy walks. Yeah, and the Did you do a TB test there years ago, John, on the north? I think you told me in nearly finished and the calves started eating the sheets, the paperwork, <laughs> when you'd almost finished. Uh, well, it might have been a little now. That did happen to me once, all the paperwork. You know how things were, and I left it on like that, no, and, uh, and the, they were all eaten. <laughs> uh, all the paperwork was eaten, so there was no record. And in those days, you couldn't go and get it, you know, off like you can now, off no. a computer. <laughs> And, and I'd also taken bloods for Brucella as well. Oh, really? So a TB test, you could have read it the second time, oh, but with the with the bloods, of course, there was no record of which individual cow. No. Thing, and so it started all over again. Now here's two good chaps you'll all recognise. Why do you need the wheelbarrow? The bottle looks empty to me. <laughs> On the way back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is Trafara. Where Robert, Robert Rice, where we now oh, Elizabeth no. himself live now, that's my father. He was born at Tregowris Farm, or the Hoskins Snow Farm. That's where William, Vivian and Leslie and all... Oh, he was now. born there? He moved when he was about eight or nine, I believe. The um, started farming there in 1900 at Trotharum. Because you had an anniversary celebration. Yes, there, didn't we did do a hundred year celebration yeah. there, yeah. We ran a dairy herd up till about eight years ago, and then we decided to go beef. You packed a million eight years ago? Yeah, I think it'll be eight years this. Is that a little white carrot box? No, we still got it. Really? Yeah. 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 But you packed up eight years, so we. I, I'm sure it's eight, eight years. So you've done very well, haven't you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Now, here's a good example of a Cornish hedge just been made by a local person. Oh. Yeah. Vivian. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And a bad bit of hedge in it. No, no. It's, it's, it's a good example. Stone. It's the same yeah. stone that. Monty, yes. God, we've got. I don't know if your stone is the not same, far, but, no, but they're no. not. They're not easy to hedge. No. These stones out here are all shale, and they're fairly flat. These are all stones that come out of the clay, and uh, and they're not easy to hedge with. You can build a hedge with them. You can build a hedge with anything. <laughs> 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 you know, they've got the art of Cornish hedging is using what's available, yeah. not necessarily yes. buying yes. in. Yeah. We, you know, with the Fugu, and that's that's got a lot of Canelli Dome stones in it. That's all really? cap stones and all the Cabroic stones from the Danes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, I had a lot of stone from my way right up to our house from Weybridge. And when Mike Roberts was there looking at our house, he grabbed a few stones from our place to take back building his house. Yeah, so we just, do it, yeah, and they yeah. were doing it the same yeah, back yeah. two and a half, three thousand years ago. Yeah, yes. you know, so it's a bit of a dying art, though, isn't it? Good, good, good edging, edge. yeah. We can we, all build edges, yeah. can't we? You'll stay up, you might not look. <laughs> not the same degree, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Now here are two young lads, and I think we, I, I think we recognise them. We've got that photo, no doubt. Two youthful looking gentlemen? Yeah. Yes. They had more hair in those days. Well, it's only because we cut it shorter now. Oh, right. Mick was a collie, and then... 
And Mick, I got from Vivian Julian over there, and uh, oh. Vivian was a hard man. He said, dog ain't no good, Chris, shoot it. He said, you're no good, shoot it. No, 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 no. So, but he wanted a brilliant dog. He, 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 he used was, to he like would, people's mud flaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd go up the lane and he'd pull people's mud flaps off. With somebody, a rep, I don't know whether he lost his license anyway, his wife was driving him around, and he came here, the wife sat in the car, we'll see, then the dog thought the car was going to leave all the time the wife was sitting in it, so the chat was talking to us, and I kept glancing over, the dog's good at every mud flap. <laughs> see, when I, I, with four mud flaps sticking out, <laughs> right angles from the car, <laughs> I didn't say anything, he got in his car and didn't say anything. She was still sat in the car, and the dog, you could see the car rock. <laughs> she was too frightened to get out. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's a very nice natured dog, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Roy Prod and uh, yeah, one of his brood mares. Yeah, Roy liked his mares, didn't he? He did. He never yeah. done no riding, but he used to. Oh, he but they, it was an interesting chap. He came from Plymouth, didn't mm. he, as a vacuee uh, yeah. yeah. in the war and stayed. Mm. And then he and uh, Hazel made um, flies, uh, flies, feathers, yeah. Feathers, yeah. Yeah. feathers for the mackerel yeah. fishing industry. And they had to save up to buy their first lorry. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he, he was he was back to eat with Willie Richards, doesn't he? Down for lean. Yeah, he did. Yes. Around the trash bin for a while. Yeah. Ted White's lorry, Roy started with. That's uh, the next one's <laughs> Benny Yaw. Yeah, 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 that was in that must yeah. be a fat stock show. Yeah, it was a fat stock show, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Benny was a lovely chap. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was that? Twerky. Twerky. Twerky farm. He, he milked cows there all his life until he retired, but he he never kept his cows indoors at all. They went out every night, mm. 365 days a year, and they said he tried to keep them in once because it was so cold, the caves had like, icicles hanging from their bellies. <laughs> Kept them in, they made such a din, he had to go and let them, out. Let them out. And yeah. through the winter, they were in the same field, same field every winter, every year. Mm. Yeah, now look, Alice Chalmers, Rain Baylor, Rain Baylor. Yeah. same yes. sail that. Uh, no nodders on it, no. if you had to walk around the field and tie the bales up. Yeah. He, used to thread oh. the, he used to thread the string around it. Yeah, just like a spider eye. Oh. And his wife used to be out in the field tying, pulling the two ends together and tying the knots. Yeah. Your um, uncle had one of those? Yes. A small yeah. brown bear. And I can yeah. remember him using that. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, you remember these chaps we were talking about them. This is uh, Richard and Richard of the Nakashi out there when they were oh, doing right. it here. Oh, yes. And you think Sounds everything was done at floor level. <laughs> How their backs didn't yeah. go, because they're yeah. bending down. They were very swift at doing it. What would they pay you in those days for a you know a dead cow? Would well, they pay you, wouldn't they? I don't know. Can't remember. I can't remember the days when they started charging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now you remember <laughs> typical farmers. You don't remember they gave you something. <laughs> Why? Well, I don't how much do they charge to collect a cow now? A lot of money. Seventy quid. Seventy quid. I think it's seventy. Yeah. Well, 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 I mean, I am my one collector. No, we haven't yeah. done that. I think they paid you twenty quid. It yeah. might have done. Well, I have a nice. feeling. I can remember where we used to have Fred Stadden at um, Calvert, and they were, I think, three pound or five pound, and eight pound rings a bell. Look as though it, perhaps it was a cow, a yearling, and a cow or something. Mm. Or sheep. Or sheep. Yeah. 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 You, you know, something like that. That's uh, the wedding, uh, yeah, Tilly Lug's wedding. And, um, Her father used to farm in Pilquest where we were so making it. Yes. Yeah. I was pulling silage there once down past my nifters and two or three cars had reversed for me. Yeah. They, well, they didn't hardly reverse far enough and I could see I wasn't going to be able to get through, but I thought, oh, sugar, you know, they, they'll have to pull forward and go, I'll drive through anyway. Yeah. Pulled a few stones at the edge. And, Mrs. who lived there come out give me a hang, you know, and I, I took my time and managed to cool her down and then Jackie Lug come down with Mary on a tractor <laughs> and he wound her right up again. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? I can't remember. Oh, what he said. Well, somebody caught the edge here. <laughs> Mary was there laughing and Mrs. Arby went off again. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. He had a lot of fun with the legs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is the last one. Well, you might know the story of these ones, but anyway, that's the famous jumper. Bernard. Yes, yeah, Bernard, yes. That isn't a Moroccan bloke, is it? Yeah, that's the Moroccan bloke. Oh, right. Because in the war, yeah. Bernard uh, was stationed on some isolated island somewhere for the RAF with three or four Arab blokes mm -hmm. sending signals out. Mm -hmm. And he was, they were wonderful blokes. Mm -hmm. He used to drive to Morocco, Morocco every, every year. year. For years. But the first bit of that is the jumper. Do you know the, the story of it? See this jumper he's wearing there? Oh, yeah. 
Well, Colleen knitted that for him. And when I gave the picture, I said, that's an unusual sort of jumper. Well, she said, you know what that is, don't you? I said, no, no. Well, she said, it's a safety belt. Yes. Yeah, seat belt, yeah. yeah. Safety seat belt. You would never uh, wear, wouldn't wear a seat belt. belt no. And she you said, didn't. when we went down to Morocco, she said, I was always very nervous through France and Spain in case we got caught. We couldn't speak the language. I didn't want him locked up. And so he wore this hot jump, all he wore the jumper. Jump look, as even, but if you look, she's That's even knitted the crossfit. Yeah, and from a distance, you wouldn't know. Oh, a seat belt. And that's Bernard's seatbelt. Oh, God.